In this tutorial, we will be demonstrating how you can run a very basic eBPF XTB program. XTB drop will be used as well as some of the other XTB actions. We will be using Fedora 28 for this, as it has the most up-to-date repositories, but other distributions such as Ubuntu can be used, but some of the tools within the distribution may be out of date, therefore you might have to compile the tool from sources to make sure that you have all the features required. At the end, we will also be showing you how you can offload the BPF program onto your smart NIC. From the lab, we are using two different computers. One on the left will be a fresh instance of Fedora 28, and this will be running the BPF program, whilst it is connected to another host, which is just there to send packets to it. But you can use live traffic if you wanted, or any other form of traffic generation. The BPF program can be run on different points of the host. It can be run on driver mode of the host, which means that when a packet comes in, the driver itself can run the BPF program on using XTP, and it can carry out different functionality, such as it can drop the packet to stop it from reaching the host, or it can TX the packet, which means it can send the packet back out of the network interface to where it came from. With SmartNIC technology, this same application can be run on the SmartNIC itself. This means that the processing is done on the hardware of the network card, which means it might never even reach the host itself. And the same actions, such as dropping the packet, or TXing the packet can be carried out on the actual hardware. For this lab, we will be setting up certain tools. Fedora 28 already obviously comes with a kernel, and it also comes with IP root. These just have to be updated using the built-in repository. As well as this, we will also be installing new tools such as Clang and LLVM, EVTool and HPing3. And lastly, we will be finishing off with the installation of a firmware to allow us to do offload. The flow of a BPF program is as follows. Firstly, you write a C program. You then compile the C program into an object file, which contains the BPF program. And then we can use IP root to actually load the object into the kernel or SmartNIC. So let's switch over to the host to understand what is happening. Okay, so on the left hand side, we have the host we want to run the BPF program on. On the right hand side, we have the traffic generator. So let's begin. Firstly, we want to update the repositories to make sure we have the latest kernel and the latest IP rate. So here, we've got an update to crypt set setup. If you did have to update the kernel, make sure you also do a reboot after doing this step. Now, what we want is we need to have some of these packages. We need to have Clang and LLVM so we can compile the code. We also want to have HPing3 for traffic generation later, EFTOL, and this should be enough to keep us going. So if we leave us here running and we Okay, so once the packages have been updated, we can now set up the rest of the environment. Because it's a fresh install, I haven't yet given any of my network interfaces an IP address, so let's do that. So for both of the hosts, I want to use ETH4 to send and receive traffic. So I just use an IP add address command, which gives each of them an IP address. Okay, cool. So now if I ping from each other to the other host, it should now be able to work because they've got the same IP range. Okay, cool. Now let's start off with the first ever XTP program. So I'm going to create a full program using VI called XTP.C, but you can use whatever text editor you want. Firstly, we want to include the headers for BPF. And then we want to actually write our first ever BPF program. So we're going to create a function called main. And within that body of the main, we want to return the XTP action. This is a very basic program, but all it is doing is it's going through and it's returning drop to all incoming packets. So let's save that file. Okay, now we need to compile the program into an object file. So if you use the client command, we can compile this down. So we want to do target BPF to say we want to compile a BPF program. We want to feed it an xtp.c program that we just made, and we want to output xtp.o. We're also going to use the dash um, letter o2 
which also optimizes the program to make sure it gets the best performance. Okay, let's have a look. Okay, that's the program xdp.o made. So how do we load it? Well, what we do is we use the IP command. But first, let's try and get better visualization of what's happening to the host. Using the same um, host, we can actually do a TCP dump on the interface. Because we're going to use ETH4, let's run TCP dump against it. Of course, it doesn't have TCP dump because it's a fresh install. So let's just install it there quickly. Whilst that is happening, let's go to the traffic generator and let's set up an hping3 command. All this does is send hping um, TCP packets to the host. We want to send it out on interface ETH4 and we want to send it to the other host, which is 10.0.0.1. Okay, before we do that, let's now go back and let's run TCP dump. Okay, it's now listening and if we send packets to it, we can now see packets coming in albeit very slowly. If we use the dash dash fast option, packets should come in a bit quicker. Okay, great. Now let's see if we can use XDP to stop the packets coming in. To do this, we're gonna use the IP command. IP link, which then brings up the link interfaces, and we want to IP link and set XDP driver um, to load not the BPF program. So we do IP link, set dev eth4 and we want to load xtp drv so we want to load xtp on driver mode and we want to load not their xtp.o file and because we haven't given it a name within the bpf program yet we're just going to do sec txt so what happens is as soon as you run that we can now see the traffic has stopped if you run the ip link again we can now see a program has been loaded here an XTP program on driver mode. To remove the program, if we just press up twice, we can now get the same command. And if we just delete the object bit and run the same command, but instead we set XTP to off, we can now see when we unload the program, traffic can now flow again, which is great. So now we've done XTP drop, let's try another XTP action. So if we open up file, we can now change the XTP action to TX. This will retransmit the packet that comes in back out the interface to where it came from. In other words, it will bounce the packet. So let's see what's actually happening. If we run TCP dump on the actual traffic generator, and if we rerun the um, traffic generation command, we can see what's happening. Let me just cancel out of TCP dump now. We can see packets are being generated here and being sent to the host, and then the other host is sending a reset flag saying it doesn't know what the packet's for and it's trying to reset the connection. Okay, let's rerun this here again. Okay, now, to recompile in the program, we use the client command again. Uh, if you run this, it will create a new object file. Now we can now load, but it'll be doing TX now. Um, again, we can do the same XDP command to load the program. So let's rerun it and see what happens to TCP dump traffic. Okay, let me just cancel out TCP dump here. So what happens is at this here point is when we loaded the XTP program. Beforehand, the host was getting the packets, as in this here host was receiving the packets and it was sending it back a reset packet. Because the XTP program is now intercepting the packets and sending the packet back to the host, the packets are now being received twice. In other words, this is the packet coming out of the traffic generator, and then this is the packet being received. Because the BPF program is TXing it back to where it came from. Now, to do offload onto a SmartNIC such as the Neptunome CX, we need to have the correct firmware. We can get this here firmware from the Neptunome website. So let me see if we can open it up here. Okay, here it is here. So if you go to help.netronome.com, this will bring you to a homepage. And if you go into the BPF section, this will show you a list of resources you can have de um, dedicated to BPF, such as firmware here, and also you can get some of the other applications and a user guide here. So we want to have the firmware and we're using Fedora, therefore we will download this here, RPM here. So once you click on this here, it will download the RPM at the bottom down here and we just want to keep it and copy it over to the host. So this is um, 
already on here. I installed this earlier, but um, to actually install it, you use the RPM command. And we install the RPM. Cool. And what this will do is it will install the firmware onto the system. To check what firmware you're currently running, you can use the eth tool command. So if you do eth tool dash i with the name of the interface, we can see now it's currently running just the basic NIC firmware. But we want to run the BPF one. So we've now installed the BPF firmware, but to reload it, we just do an RM mod, which removes the driver for the NFP, and we just want to reload it. So yeah, if we check down here, um, actually we check up here, DMESC, and this will show you what's just happened. So this is showing the kernel logs, and we can see now it's reloaded the firmware upon the SmartNIC, and we can now see in capabilities that there are now be BPF capabilities. Also, if you run the eth tool command against that interface, we can now see the firmware has changed and is now running a BPF firmware version. Okay, so how do we actually load these programs onto your offload? Well, it's quite, actually quite similar. We can actually load the program we currently have here without actually touching it. All we do is we go to IP command that we just ran previously, and we change the XTP driver to offload. Okay, and if you use IP link, we can now see now that it's currently running. So if we look at ETH4, we can see XTP offload, and it's currently running a program. Sometimes it can be a bit confusing about what to try and understand what's happening with XTP. So to get around this, we would actually advise you to go to our GitHub page. So if you look for Netronome, driver, GitHub, you will get access to our GitHub page, NFP driver kmods. And if you get the GitHub link and go to your host and clone it, this will clone a lot of the tools that we have within the GitHub page. And once it's downloaded, if you go inside the repository, go inside tools and view the contents, you can see there's a start watch script. If you run that there start watch script against the interface that you're interested in, which in our case is ETH4, we can actually see what's happening. Now, if you also use the dash C command, it will show you it in colors, which will be easier to view. So we can see what's happening here is that packets are coming in from here and they're coming up through the fiber interface and they're going to a BPF app, which is running on offload. So this is the NFP, in other words, our SmartNIC here. And up here is the host. So let's take off the program using the same command as before. So IP link set dev eth4 and let's take off the XTP program. Okay, let me just make this a bit smaller. So what we can see is packets are now coming in and are going up to the host. In this video, we have shown you how easy it is to get a fresh install of Fedora 28 up and running to run BPF on both XTP driver and offload. For more information, look at our help page at help.netronome.com, which has a lot more information based on both BPF for driver mode and BPF on offload. We have a firmware section at the top with the most up to date offload, and we also have a sample apps page, which shows some of the sample apps that we have available, showing more sophisticated functionality. We also have BPF tool, which is compiled for Ubuntu, and we also have documentation available, such as the user guide. This user guide covers extra steps, for example, how to install it on Ubuntu, and also shows which um, features we support on the different kernel versions for offload. At the bottom of the user guide, we also have a section for troubleshooting, and it goes through some of the most basic um, issues you might encounter with solutions on how to solve it. Hopefully this video has been of help to you, and if there's any other information that you require, please do not hesitate to contact us.